What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. We continue our popular band exercise series here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to build a bigger back with just bands. See, a lot of times people think they're screwed when they're training at home and they don't have access to a gym, but I'm telling you, if you have a couple of these here, you're gonna be able to train your back well. And not just your back, but I mean your whole back. See, because there's a lot of different areas of your back that are important to train. We wanna hit the width of your back with the lats. We wanna hit the mid-back thickness with the mid-traps and rhomboids the upper back thickness with the upper traps, and of course we want to stabilize and support it all by strengthening our lower back. Guys, let's start breaking them down area by area, exercise by exercise to give you the best of the best. Right, so let's start with the lats because most people focus on building bigger, wider lats. Remember, we can train them two ways. We can go up and down, or we can go horizontal pulling motions front to back. Well, when we talk about up and down, the staple exercise is always going to be the pull-up. So what we can do is we can either make it easier or harder. If you want to make it easier, you put the band around the bar and you simply step into it like this, and this is going to unweight a percentage of your body weight, right? However much resistance the band provides will assist you with that much in performing the exercise that much easier. Or you could do this and simply weight up a backpack or throw a bunch of heavy things into a backpack and anchor the band to it and then step into it and put the band around your neck. Now you've got a resisted pull-up. When it comes to building a bigger back, don't underestimate the importance of overloading and bands can absolutely provide overload if utilized the right way. All right, so sticking with the basics here, guys, we've got your vertical pulling down. What about your horizontal pull? Well, you want to substitute for the barbell row, you take the band. But what most people do wrong is they either grab just one end of the band or they don't provide enough resistance. And it's easy to do because all you have to do is place it under your feet and take a nice wide stance. What that does is obviously increases the tension on the band. But here's the better part. Don't just grab one band. Reach down and grab both of them. And you can see with the anchor point dramatically shortened now, the resistance of that band has increased considerably. Is it a complete replacement for a barbell row? No, but when all you've got is a band, it's an incredible way to create overload in that horizontal pulling direction. See now, while a lot of us will stop right there and focus solely on pulling up and down vertically or front to back horizontally, the real magic actually happens when you do something in between. Transverse plane pulling, and that's what this exercise does. This is the high to low kneeling banded row. And what this provides us with is an opportunity to take that band way out in front of our body and then pull it all the way back down and around the back. One benefit we get here from bands is that we can continue to pull even an extra inch, which is gonna provide an increase in resistance. The other reason why this works so well is because of those fibers of the back. Realize they don't just run straight up and down or side to side, they do run in this southwest to northeast direction. That means if you follow the fibers, like I always tell you to, rotation is the key. Some people might have a hard time generating that peak contraction as you drive your elbow back to the spine unless they have something else going on, and that is the other arm back there waiting for it, because we can create a more intense back contraction by doing so. So I like this for that purpose. It's called the two for one row. You anchor the band in a low position and grab on with one arm. You row it back until it's in an isometric contraction. Hold it there the entire time. It's waiting for that other arm to meet it. How do you do that? You grab the top portion of the band, and with that other arm, you're gonna simply drive that arm back again, trying to meet those elbows in the middle. This is a great variation for building up that mind-muscle connection that oftentimes is missing when it comes to back training. We finish up the first zone here for the lats with two exercises that will actually allow you to take maybe the biceps out of the movement, because a lot of times, people tend to dominate with biceps in pulling exercises. Not so good when you're trying to build your back. So what we want to do is straight arm exercises that focus on the adduction function of the lats. This here is the most classic you can have, and it's called the straight arm pushdown. With the band anchored up high and the arms held out straight, your only goal is to drive those elbows down to your sides as tight and as hard as you possibly can. Resist the tendency to bend the elbows and turn this into a tricep pushdown. Keep the elbows locked out and do all the driving through the lats. The second way to accomplish the straight arm functioning of the lats is with the classic pullover exercise. You might be thinking, didn't you include this already in the chest edition of the series, Jeff? I did, but it was performed very differently. Because instead of having the elbows tight together, I want them to be flared out. If they're flared out, you're moving the focus towards the lats as the main driver of the movement. Now, it doesn't matter if the elbows get much further than, let's say, eight or 10 inches from where they start. It's the act of moving them towards adduction, towards your sides, that's gonna light them up and help you to use this exercise to build bigger lats. 
So if limiting yourself to a single vertical and horizontal exercise wasn't bad enough when you're trying to build bigger lats, skipping zones altogether is a really bad idea if you want to build a bigger back, especially with bands. But that's where bands come in really, really effectively because I'm going to argue this exercise here that targets the second zone is one of the most effective you can possibly do and it's really best performed with bands. This is called the Zeus Row and it hits that zone two middle and lower traps unbelievably. If you try this, I guarantee you're going to say this is the best part of this entire video. What you do is you anchor the band up high and you angle your body forward. And when performed like this with the narrow grip, it tends to minimize the contribution of the lats with adduction and really, really lights up those rhomboids and lower traps and mid traps unbelievably. Like I said, you have to try this. I promise you, you're going to love every minute of it or maybe hate it, but it's going to work. So can I show you something cool guys when it comes to bands? It's not just the type of band you're using, but how you anchor the band that matters. So if you really want to hit the mid back, realize that the closer our hands are to each other, the more we're actually going to limit the ability to pre-stretch that area. Because if I wrap it around something narrow here, my hands will start and finish in this position. But if I were to take it around something much wider and take that left over right, right over left grip, which is going to protract the shoulder blades, which gives you that good pre-stretch on the mid traps and rhomboids. This exercise will do just that. It's the wrap around row. You can see that by widening my feet out. I create that wider anchor point. And by doing so, I could take that right over left, left over right grip and apply that same effectiveness to this exercise. It's a great way to target an area that once again, doesn't get hit often enough and bands give you a great opportunity to do it well. Which brings us to our third zone and we're going to slide up the traps a little bit now to focus on those upper traps and that thickness in the upper back. And this here is just a classic banded shrug. And once again, you can see that we can shorten the distance between our hands and the anchor point. And that's where the tension really, really increases here. Guys, remember, no matter what band you buy, there's going to be a variation in the amount of tension it can provide. It might tell you from 60 to 120. Well, we're talking about maxing out the tension of the band when you perform it this way. And most importantly, maxing out the tension for the purpose of helping to actually grow those upper traps of yours when you don't have dumbbells or a barbell. Now guys, I'd stand on my head if it meant getting you to do face pulls, but thankfully, I don't have to because that's a little dramatic and by now you should know you got to do your face pulls. But what you can do is lay on your back and do this, and this is a lying face pull. And the lying face pull, it gives you an opportunity to do the same thing, to build up those muscles of the upper back and also the rotator cuff and scap area, but it gives you a good target. A lot of times people will struggle with making sure they get their hands back far enough. And what you do here is you just simply drive them down towards the floor as far as you possibly can. It gives you that end point for making sure that you've gotten that complete contraction of these key muscles. Hold it for one to two seconds at the bottom of every rep and I promise you, you're going to fall in love with this version of the face pulls just like I hope you love every other version of the face pull. And finally, that brings us to that all important but oftentimes neglected fourth zone here and that's the low back. And we know that this zone when not paid attention to can actually undermine the effectiveness of the exercises in all the other zones. So we want to do this and do this well. And one of my favorite ways to do this is with a band actually is the good morning. Because a lot of times people just simply screw this exercise up. Particularly those people that don't even understand how to perform it in the first place. What you want to do is you want to actually hinge at the hips and not turn this into a simply a bending over to touch your toes type movement. If you do this right with the band anchored across the back of your neck, you actually get great engagement of both the glutes and the low back working in concert together to fortify it and help you to stay injury free for the long term. And that brings us to one of my favorite ways to train the low back and that's actually more of a, a multi-zone exercise. We call this one the Superman press out. What this does is it actually engages the entire posterior chain. You anchor the band around your feet and you simply crawl yourself out into this position. Now what we do is we lift our whole body up thighs off the ground, chest off the ground to activate the low back and the glutes. But we travel all the way up that posterior chain by engaging those lower traps by reaching our arms up overhead at the same time. This is going to be one of your favorite exercises to do if you never did it before. As a matter of fact, it might actually trick you into performing low back exercises because you have so much damn fun doing it. So there you have it guys, no gains to be lost because you're training with bands. If you want to continue to build your back up, you've got the right exercises now to get the job done. If you're looking for others in this series guys, make sure you check out the chest edition and the shoulders edition which I'll link for you at the end of the video. And if you're looking for step by step plans guys, we have them all laid out for you over at athletics.com. Leave a comment below, let me know what you want to see next in this series. And if you haven't done so, make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. Alright guys, see you soon.